Italians each year observe the Good Friday crucifixion, Easter Sunday resurrection tradition. Yet few stop to question the origins of these beliefs. What is the truth about the celebration of Easter? The World Tomorrow. The Worldwide Church of God presents Herbert W. Armstrong, internationally recognized ambassador for world peace, visiting prominent leaders around the globe, discussing the cause of world problems, and proclaiming the good news of the world tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Herbert W. Armstrong. Millions will be celebrating Easter next Sunday. But listen to this shocking truth. The resurrection of Jesus Christ did not occur on an Easter Sunday morning or any other Sunday morning. It's commonly supposed that Jesus was crucified on Friday, and therefore it's been called for at least the lifetime of all of us living today, it's been called Good Friday, and that the resurrection occurred uh, about sunrise or just before on Easter Sunday morning. That is not true. That is a false tradition. Millions have been deceived by it. Listen to what Jesus himself said, Jesus Christ himself. The Pharisees have been questioning him they tried to doubt him. They tried to tie him up with trick questions. And they asked him for a sign, that is, for a miracle, a miraculous sign to prove that he really was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And not just an ordinary human, but he was God in the human flesh. And so in Matthew, the 12th chapter, and beginning with verse 39, Jesus answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, that is, a miracle in proof, a sign. There shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, and incidentally, whale is the wrong translation, it should be a great fish, uh, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. As Jonah had been three days and three nights, he was in a veritable grave, as I'm going to show you in just a moment. Let's turn back now to that. In Jonah, the uh, first chapter, and in verse 17, now the Eternal had prepared a great fish, not necessarily a whale, but a great fish, to swallow up Jonah. God had prepared it, it says. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. I'll continue right on, chapter 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Eternal, his God, out of the fish's belly, and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Eternal, and he heard me, out of the belly of hell. Now the word hell here is translated from the Hebrew word sheol, which means a grave. Out of the belly of a grave, he was in a grave, cried I, and thou heardest me. And so he was resurrected by being vomited up by the whale, after which he went and delivered the message that God had told him to at the city of Nineveh. Now that was the only sign that Jesus said he would give as a miraculous proof. He would be in the grave, in the heart of the earth. And it was in the heart of the earth. I've been in that grave, oh, three, four times, as a matter of fact, through the last 10 or 12 years. And it is hewn right out of the heart of the earth in stone. I have a book that I'm going to offer you that gives a picture of it on the cover of the very tomb where he was buried, in the heart of the earth, that the sign was the miracle to be performed was that he would be, after his crucifixion, three days and three nights in that grave, in that tomb. That was the only sign that Jesus gave. Now, in John, 
the uh, uh, 11th chapter, verses 9 and 10. And incidentally, I'm going to read you a good many scriptures right now, more than I usually do in a program. You don't hear the Bible read very much on television programs, especially the average religious program. We need to see what God's Word said, because this is God speaking when I read out of the Bible. Most people don't believe God. They will believe other people. They will believe traditions of men, but they don't believe what God says. Adam and Eve didn't. Not very many believe what Jesus said when he was on earth, only 120, although thousands upon thousands heard him, multiple thousands. But now in John 11, verses 9 and 10, uh, uh, just what do we mean now by a day? Three days and three nights. What is a day and what is a night according to the Bible? Well, let Jesus himself explain, John 11, verses 9 and 10. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? Now he's giving a definition of a day. There are twelve hours in a day. If any man uh, walk in the day, he stumbleth not. But, he says in the next verse, If a man walk in the night, he stumbleth. So he's talking about day and night, and there are 12 hours in a day. Well, then there are 12 hours also in a night. Now, that is Jesus' definition of how much time is a day and a night. Now, you see the common understanding, the common tradition, and you've heard it all your life, so have I, most of us have, is that Jesus was crucified on Friday. He was buried just before sunset on Friday, that he arose about Sunday morning before sunrise, or just about sunrise. But how can you figure three days and three nights from Friday evening just before sunset? All that night is only one night. Saturday is one day, and Saturday night is two nights. You have one day and two nights. That's not three days and three nights. And yet the only sign Jesus gave that he is your Savior, your Messiah, is that he would be three days and three nights in the grave, actually, after he was buried, three days and three nights in the tomb. Let's turn next to Mark, the uh, seventh chapter, verses eight and nine. I've just shown you the tradition and what you've always heard all your life. Notice what Jesus said about these traditions, beginning with verse seven. Howbeit, in vain do they worship me, Jesus said, teaching four doctrines, the commandments of men. Now, can you worship Christ in vain? Well, that's what he said. They worship him in vain. You don't hear that preached very often. Teaching uh, for doctrines, the commandments of men, for laying aside the commandments of God, you hold to the traditions of men. Well, ye reject the commandment of God that you may keep your own traditions. All we have is a tradition about Easter being on a Sunday morning, or the resurrection of Christ being on a Sunday morning. You can worship Christ in vain just believing traditions of men. That is precisely what, uh, what Jesus said at that point. There is another expression used in the New Testament. Let's get to that next. Uh, the expression, after three days. Now, it can't be after three days unless it's at least 72 hours, it would have to be after three days. It doesn't have to be even one minute after, but it must be at the end of three days to be after. All right, notice Mark 8, 31. And Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed, and after three days rise again. You can't have after three days on a Good Friday burial and a Sunday morning resurrection. That's impossible. And yet that is exactly, precisely what Jesus said. Listen, my friends, tradition cannot be relied on. Jesus said we worship him in vain, holding tradition instead of the truth. And the only record, the only historic record is what I'm reading you now, right out of the Bible, out of God's Word, which is inspired by the eternal God. All right, notice Mark 9, beginning with verse 31. For uh, he taught, Jesus taught his disciples and said to them, 
the Son of Man is delivered unto the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. But after he is killed, it would be the third day. Now, the first day after he was killed, if he was killed on Friday, the first day after would be on Saturday, and the second day after would be on Sunday, but the third day after would be on a Monday. Now, nobody thinks he rose on Monday. So you see, again, that completely blocks out a Good Friday burial and an Easter Sunday morning resurrection. Now, uh, I'd like to have you notice Matthew 27 and verse 62, following the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, now this is just after his death, after three days, I will rise again. Again, Jesus himself said, after three days he would rise. Not after one day and two nights, but after three days. I'm going to give you so much proof right from the Bible. And you know, in the mouth of just two or three witnesses, the Bible says a thing is established. But this is a whole lot more than just two or three. So it's... Uh, I'm going to show you now he was to rise in three days, not after, uh, but inside of. He could be right at the end of it, but not one day longer, or uh, actually not a minute longer. It wouldn't be in three days. That's in John 2, beginning with verse 19. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple. And in three days, not after, but in, that's within, in three days, inside of, not outside of, in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, forty and six years was the temple in building, and uh, wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When he was crucified, he would raise, or God the Father would raise it up in three days, not outside of but that you would be after three days and within three days. There could be no time except precisely three days and three nights at the same time of day as he was buried. It had to be then at the very same time of day. Uh, there are three expressions now that I've already read to you and given you adequate proof right out of the New Testament. Three days and three nights he would be in the grave after three days, he would rise again. So it had to be after three days, but that could be right at the end of three days and still within it. And in three days, that cannot be any more. It couldn't be more than three days. It can't be less than the full 72 hours. It has to be right within that time. So the resurrection had to occur at the same time of day as the burial. Now, he's talking not about the time of the crucifixion, not the time of his trial before the crucifixion. He is talking about the exact amount of time he would be spending in the grave, from the time he was buried until the time of the resurrection. So the resurrection was at the same time. Now, if you'll notice John 19, verses 13 and 14. Now, this is talking about his trial just before he was uh, crucified. He was on trial before Pontius Pilate. Pilate, therefore, heard that saying. Uh, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover season. It was the preparation of the Passover, and Jesus observed the Passover, the preparation meant the day following the Passover. The Passover was held in the evening part of the day. God's days end at sunset, and the next day begins at sunset. Man had to change what God had done and begin the days in the middle of a dead night. And God has never changed that. Men changed it. So the day ends and the next day begins at sunset. So it was the preparation of the Passover. Now, the Passover was in the beginning of that day, but the Passover day was a preparation. The next day was an annual Sabbath day. 
there were seven of those given to Israel. Jesus observed them all. The apostles observed them all. The early church in the first century observed them all. Jesus' apostles observed them all. But nobody seems to do it today. I've been doing it a good many years, but not very many do it. So notice, and it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, which means noon. Now, this was in the daytime of that same day of the Passover. The Passover had been held the night before, right after sundown. And about the sixth hour, which was noon, and said unto the Jews, Behold your king. Now, let me explain that sixth hour again. They had hours by day and watches by night. So there are 12 hours in a day. Now, the first hour begins from 6 o'clock in the morning. And the sixth hour then would be noon. And the ninth hour is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then you come to the twelfth hour, and that's the end of a day, 12 hours in a day. And then you have the uh, first, second, third, sixth uh, watch at night, and the ninth watch, and the twelfth watch ends it, and then you have another day in the, the day and night sequences. Now then, about Jesus' death, we turn next to Mark 15, beginning with verse 34. And at the ninth hour, that's three o'clock in the afternoon, as I just explained, at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice. Now, there's another scripture that shows that he had been pierced with a sword and the blood gushed out. And he literally screamed. That's not in the King James translation, but in one of the more modern translations. He screamed, but here it just says with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then in verse 37, And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. In other words, he died. The spirit came out of him and his breath uh, left him. And that's when he died after 3 o'clock, just after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that uh, the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, it was an annual Sabbath, for that Sabbath day was an high day. So ask any Jew, what is a high day? You say, that's not a weekly Sabbath. That's not a weekly Saturday. That is an annual Sabbath. There are seven of them every year that God gave to Israel. Jesus observed them. The early apostles observed them. The church observed them until tradition got it all changed. And they went to keeping other days. They went to keeping Easter and other pagan days. And I'm going to show you later that it was a pagan day uh, instead. Next, turn to Luke 23 and verse 50. And behold there was a man named Joseph. Uh, Joseph was, as you read in the next verse, of Arimathea, a city of the Jews, uh, who himself had waited for the kingdom of God. This man went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. He didn't die till after 3 o'clock. It took him some time to go into the city because the crucifixion was outside of the city, and he had to go into the city and beg the body of Pilate and then come back and get the body and wrap it and... Uh, take care of it in order to bury it, and his tomb was uh, at least a few steps away, but fairly close. This man went to Pilate, and he took the body down and uh, wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher that was hewn in stone, see, in the heart of the earth, wherein never man before was laid. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. That was the annual Sabbath drawing on, which in that year occurred on a Thursday. Now, um, he was buried before sunset, and the resurrection had to take place at the same time of day, but three days and three nights later. Now then, what day uh, was the crucifixion? It was before the annual Sabbath. There were seven annual Sabbaths, as I say, every year. Jesus uh, held the Passover with his disciples. He was seized later that same night after the Passover. And the Passover was the day before the annual holy day. Turn back to Numbers 28, and I will show you that when it was first instituted in ancient Israel. Here it is. In the 14th day of the first month, 
is the Passover of the Eternal. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days of unleavened bread shall be eaten. In the first day shall be a holy convocation. That could come at any day. It was an annual time on an annual calendar day and could come on different days of the week, not necessarily on a Saturday or a Sunday, but on whatever day it happened uh, to come. So the crucifixion was late on the day of the Passover, which was a preparation for the day that was a holy convocation, the annual Sabbath, the holy convocation that came the very next day. So the resurrection took place on a Saturday afternoon because when the women came, while it was yet dark on Sunday morning, it was before sunlight, very early while it was yet dark, Jesus was not there. He had already risen. There was an angel there that said, Why seek ye Jesus among the dead? He is not here. He is already risen. And that was while it was yet dark on Sunday morning. So he rose prior to that time. He was buried shortly before sunset because the bodies could not be on the cross. They had to be buried before sundown. And Joseph of Arimathea had to hurry to get him buried that soon. And so he was resurrected in the end of a day. That had to be Saturday night was a resurrection, Saturday afternoon before sundown. And if you will trace the calendars, on that year, the Passover was on a Wednesday. And the annual holy day was on a Thursday. And he was crucified before the holy day, as they couldn't crucify him on the holy day. So they hurried to do it the day before the annual holy day. And so the crucifixion was on Wednesday afternoon. He buried just before sunset. All Wednesday night is one night. All day Thursday is one day. All Thursday night is now two nights. All day Friday is two days. Friday night is three nights. Saturday is three days. That was when the resurrection occurred. Now, that is quite a shock to a lot of people. It was to me when I learned it almost 55 years, about 54 years ago. It was quite a shock. It will be to some of you, but it is the truth of God. People have been carried away by the fables and by the traditions of men. I have a book that I'd like to offer you. It is The Resurrection Was Not on Sunday. The Resurrection Was Not on Sunday. On the front cover, I don't know whether you can see it very well on the screen or not, but uh, it is showing the garden tomb. And I'm sure that he was buried in the garden tomb because the, the uh, Golgotha where he was buried was the place of the skull. And you can still see the skull on the top of that hill. is just outside of what was the gate of the city in those days. Now, this is just a short booklet. You can read it at one sitting. And it gives you all the scriptures I've just given you now and more. It gives you absolute proof. It's something that will completely prove it if you're willing to believe the truth of God's Word. Of course, not many people do believe God, but I hope you do. And let me say, I would like to give you this. There is no charge. We have nothing to sell. We don't solicit money from the public. We're not going to follow it 